like to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Hello and welcome to Anna's Craft Your More. I'm Anna. I'd like to welcome you to my channel. My channel is about knitting, crocheting, <laughs> toy making, a little bit of sewing, cooking and whatever else I'm making at the time. Today I'd like to say a very happy Mother's Day out there to all the mums. So today is Sunday the 8th of May and it is Mother's Day here in Australia. So I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to my daughter. She has three beautiful children. Happy Mother's Day to my daughter-in-law who has two beautiful children. And happy Mother's Day to my other daughter-in-law who has one beautiful child. Now, I'd like to share with you today just a little tribute um, uh, to all the mums out there and to my mum, who, bless her, is in, in heaven. <laughs> uh, she passed away back in 2003. She was almost 72 years old. And she was a beautiful lady. She was a wonderful mum and very caring and loving mum. She had been through a lot of trials and tribulations in her life I guess you could say that she was born in the early 30s 1932 actually and in Italy because uh, I'm of Italian descent um, so she was born in Italy and she was the second youngest of nine children so her her parents were um, oh, what can you say already um, much older by the time she came along. Uh, my grandmother, so my grandfather had passed away already in the, um, I think he passed away in the early 60s. And my grandmother, my mum's mum, she passed away in the early, I think it was early 70s. Uh, she was in her 80s when she passed away. Anyway, um, so she uh, married my father via proxy, was a proxy marriage. What that is, is they uh, weren't in the same country on the same day that they were actually married. My father had already migrated here to Australia back in 1952 and my mum was in Italy. And my father's sister was um, engaged to be married to my mother's brother. So it was a brother and sister from one family marrying a brother and sister from another family. And so that's that's how they came to know of each other. Uh, my father wrote to my grandmother uh, saying that he wanted to get married. He thought it was time to get married. And he wanted to know if she knew of anyone who was uh, an eligible bachelorette. <laughs> Uh, and so um, that's where my mother came into play. Um, she was 20, I uh, think she was 21 years old by that, by the time they met, I think. Well, met only through letters and a few photos, not very many photos were sent to each other. But she knew of the family, like I said, because my uh, aunt and uncle were engaged to be married. So long story short, they, um, she agreed to become his wife and um, they fell in love through writing to each other um, she had one stipulation though that um, all the photos that my father had sent and that she had seen of my photo was only like a half shot you know like from the chest up and she said in jest in one of her letters to him that she would only marry him if she was sure that he had legs <laughs> It was just very funny at the time. It was a funny story that she used to say all the time. So he uh, made a uh, quick dash to the photographers and got a full shot photo, head to toe, <laughs> and, and quickly sent it to her. So then she agreed to marry him. So they were married on the 3rd of December back in 1955, I think it was, or 56. I think it was 1955, they got married. And one of my uncles stood in as a groom in the church. It was a uh, dual wedding. So my aunt and uncle, 
um, that were getting that were engaged got married on the same day. So there was two brides that walked down the aisle, <laughs> and they they did that in Italy. Um, my father was here in Australia. He was in um, Mackay, which is part of Queensland, and he was on sugarcane fields. So he was actually cutting sugarcane on that particular day while he was getting married. <laughs> It sounds really strange, but, you know, it, it happens, a long-distance relationship. So anyway, they got married. So then, um, so that was in 1955. So it was two years before my mum actually could get, um, you know, like they had to get all the paperwork ready and then uh, book a, uh, a place on a ship. Uh, she came to, from Italy on a ship. So that took, you know, more than a month uh, traveling here by ship. And so back in, uh, so then in 1957, she finally came here and they had a wonderful two-week honeymoon uh, in Sydney. By that stage, my father had already moved to Sydney and set up home actually in Haberfield, which is a small suburb of Sydney. And yeah, and so that's where the, um, the great story continued on from there. Um, so they went on to have a beautiful life together. Um, my father, um, oh, sorry, they had five children. Um, my eldest brother was born in 1959 and then, you know, all us kids from there. And my younger brother and sister, who are twins, uh, they were born in the early 70s as well, 1971. So anyway, so we had, um, we had a lovely life, you know, all together, all the family and everything. And back in 1976, um, it was the first time that my mum and dad had gone back to Italy. We had a, a beautiful family trip uh, for three months and we went to Italy. We got to visit, you know, their hometowns. Uh, um, the two hometowns were part of Bari, so um, which is a region of Italy and it's on the Adriatic seaside. And, uh, yeah, so then... Uh, then uh, in 1981, uh, my father passed away suddenly and um, we were all absolutely devastated. Um, sorry, I still you know, get emotional about these things. <clears throat> so anyway, so then um, yeah, my father passed away and um, my mother was always um, grateful that she had 25 years together with my father and, you know, as a family. And then in 2003... Um, mum passed away and she passed away from pancreatic cancer. And she passed away on the 22nd of December. To, sorry, 2003, not 2013. So it's been quite some time. But anyway, but today I'd like to remember her um, and all the things that she used to do for the family and and, uh, and for my father. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things that she made, um, a, a couple of things that are quite old uh, and that she made by hand. So firstly, it's a, what I wanted to show you here is an embroidery that she did. And you can see that that's, I'll just have to hold it up like this. It's the only way you can get a good shot of it. So that's the embroidery. And she embroidered this onto what they used to use back in, Back in the day, uh, it's a towel that you would actually, you know, dry yourself with. But it's not a, a towel like the kind of towels that we use today. It's a very thick, um, heavy-duty type cotton, and it's like a. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a woven cotton material, and it has this lovely tattered. I, th I think that's called what you call it. It's tatting, a fringe on the on the ends, and then there's the beautiful hand embroidery there that she's done so it's approximately a meter and a half long and it's about oh, I'd say 60 centimeters wide and she said that this is what they used to use for towels it's not the terry toweling furry terry toweling like we have towels bath towels now this was the kind of towels that they had used it was this one this kind of material she also did another another one, which I don't know what this is called. It's not crochet. I think it's called tatting. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Do comment in the, in the comments if you know what it's actually called. 
Now, the, the top part is still in beautiful condition, but the bottom fringe part over the years, you can see that it's all, um, uh, what do you call that? It's all knotted. But this is also on a beautiful piece of material. Now, it's very hard to see, but this material has a floral design in the cloth. I don't know if you can see it there. No, what I might have to, oh, there, there you might be able to see it. You can just see that floral design. It's really lovely. It's a different, um, different cotton to this one. This one's quite thick and more heavy duty. This one's a little bit more delicate. And it, like I said, it has that um, imprint. Um, I don't know what you'd call that. Yeah, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and get a, a close-up shot of it uh, if it shows up in a photo. And then you'll be able to see it better. But you can only just see it there where you can see those. Um, you can only just see the, it's a lovely floral design. Beautiful. So that's something that she made. Now she used to say that when she was growing up, they didn't have electricity or water in the home. So they would have to go to the, the town, um, there was like a, a well, a fountain, they used to call it the fountain, and they used to go and fill up water and everything like that. And they had a fire, like a fireplace and fire cooking in the home. Um, and they used to do a lot of, by candlelight, a lot of stitching and embroidery. Um, you know, that was their entertainment. Um, yeah, so that's what she said. That's what she experienced growing up. Then later in the 40s, I think it might have been 40s or early 50s, then their home was fitted with electricity and everything like that. And, um, yeah, and, but just different different experience altogether to when, you know, we, when we were growing up, we sort of took it for granted. We had, you know, we had TV, we had electricity, we had running water, everything like that. Um, how hard life would have been uh, back then, but you, you would be accustomed to that because that would be the only life you knew, I guess. Now, also, I wanted to show you this um, um, hand crocheted, uh, we call it a mandolina. Now, mandolina just translates to shawl. And this here was made by my auntie, who has since passed away, of course. And she made this for my mother. So when we went to Italy, I'm pretty sure that when we went to Italy is when she gave it to her. So I know that it's from at least 1976. And it is a beautiful purple crocheted shawl. It has like a um, like a little collar section, which you can have it, uh, you know, over depending which way you're going to wear it. Over that side, it's it's so pretty. Now I don't think this is wool. I think it's an acrylic yarn, but it's gorgeous, gorgeous design. So intricate. I don't know if she used a pattern or if something um, that she just made up herself, but it is it's gorgeous. I'll put it on. You can see. But I remember my mother wearing this all the time in winter. It's beautiful. That's the only crocheted thing that I have. Now, I know that my mum didn't crochet, but she was a knitter, and she used to knit uh i think it's called portuguese style where you put the the yarn around the back of your head and then you use your thumb to flick over the uh the needles <laughs> i never learned that that way of her um knitting uh I, at the moment i i like to continental knit and I, I was a what they call english knitting where you throw the yarn over the needle but um yeah but i remember her knitting and wearing this but it's beautiful. I love it. Treasure it always. <laughs> so that's that's all I have for you today. Um, I just wanted to share those few things. And I just wanted to wish again all the mothers a very happy Mother's Day. Treasure your mum. And you know, always give her a call or see her whenever you can. Thank you for joining me today. Like and subscribe. And take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's Mother's Day here in Australia and it's...